Better Utah Broadcast. My name is Katie Matheson. I'm the Communications Director here at Alliance for a Better Utah. And today we have a candidate interview. Welcome, Abrian. And can you say your last name for me? It's Velarde. Velarde, okay. Just like it's spelled. Perfect. So, Abrian is, can I call you Abe or Abrian? Abe is fine. Great. That's my son's name, so it's oh, easy nice. for me. Yeah. Um, Abrian Abe is a Green Party candidate for Senate District 12. Um, so, before we get into it, um, viewers, as you know, we have a game before we start called Is This Real Life? And of course, I've explained it to you, but I'm going to explain it to our audience. The rules are I read a news headline, and you have to determine whether or not it's real or fake. Some of them are made up. Some of them are actual headlines, so you have to guess. Okay, so I'm going to turn my screen because the text is here. All right. So are you ready? First one. Man rescued by the Hulk and Mickey Mouse near Times Square after he fell into a manhole while texting. I'm going to have to go. That's true. It's fake. Is it? Ah. But you can see it happening I because can. there's I people can. like, what is it, the Naked like the Cowboy? Cosplay. That? And yeah, stuff like yeah. That. yeah. Times yeah. Square is like an alternate universe. I love Times Square. Okay. All right, next one. Cairo Zoo denies its zebras are really donkeys with painted stripes. I'll go with thoughts on that one. It is true. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to put the link to this article. We'll put the link to the articles in the comments. But I encourage yeah, I encourage you when you go home and everyone who's watching, go look at these pictures because they are fantastic. They're hilarious. And there's no question whatsoever <laughs> that those are spray-painted donkeys. <laughs> oh, All right, next one. Bulgarian man bags world record for swimming in a sack. Oh, no, that's an interesting visual image there. Um, <laughs> uh, ew, I'm going to say false on that one. That one is real. Oh, my goodness. You're batting a thousand. See, they're going, they're going with the bags and then swimming in a sack. They're going with the puns. That's, I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, and, and, Funny humor. <laughs> and I enjoy also the fact that they're keeping this as a world record. So there's a world record for <laughs> swimming, but then there's also a world record for swimming in a sack. So, oh my, there's more than one entry. yeah, I, yes, there are more than one entries for swimming in a sack for distance. Um, and all the details will, of course, be in our comments. All right, next one. All right, redemption. Here we go. Sneaky chimpanzee steals girl's phone at the San Diego Zoo and then calls 911. I'm going to say true. <laughs> that is false. Dang it. <laughs> all righty. But, I mean, like, to be fair, chimpanzees are very sneaky. Oh, and yeah. it's not that hard to call 911 on a phone, even when it's locked, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's on purpose, but... Okay, next one. There's two more. Okay, two more. Cliff jumper in Hawaii accidentally kills a shark by landing on it. Oh, man. This is terrible. All righty. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to say true. Oh, I... I, I hold on. Ah. No, it is false. Dang it. <laughs> wah, wah. Uh, all right, last one. Artist makes perfumes for astronauts that smell like Earth. I'm going to say true on that one. That is true. All right. I knew well I'd get done. One <laughs> yes, that one. Um, the artist, her boyfriend was away, and so she missed him, and so she made a perfume that smelled like him. I think that's the story. Oh, wow. And then NASA was like, we should use this. And so here you are. So, and I mean, like, I can imagine that space smells pretty, you know sterile so i, I get that, that yeah, and i've sense. got an image of like one of those car fresheners of pine yeah. hang up <laughs> like on there. earth car freshener in the spaceship right right that's excellent i like that all right all right so that's the end of our um game segment so let's get into it first i'm going to remind our viewers we're going live every wednesday at 12 30 we have various uh movers and shakers from utah on our show be sure to click get reminders so that you can get reminders when we're about to go live and I have to do a quick plug. We have, I think, 10 panels and debates coming up this fall, starting in September. Um, and we have just announced our three panels. So that's one panel per um, proposition, which is the ballot initiatives that made it onto the ballot. Um, so we have one panel per ballot initiative that made it onto the ballot uh, coming up in September and October. So keep an eye out for that. That's from our C3 organization, ABU Education Fund. We're partnering with the John R. Park Debate Society and the Scholars uh, Network. So we've got some great people coming in to um, 
to speak on those panels, so keep an eye out for that as we go forward. So now let's get into it, Abe. Let's talk about your background. Tell us about who you are, where you come from, your education. Um, kind of set us up for um, why you're running for office. But first, let's get the basics of who you are. Okay. Well, um, I was born here in Utah. Um, I was raised by my mom. Uh, older, I'm the oldest of five. Um, and of course, uh, you know, life wasn't easy growing up. You know, we, we had our struggles, stuff like that. Uh, my mom had uh, her her battles with addiction, stuff like that. So I was kind of like a young man in his 40s, really, at that point. Mm. You know, so um, I moved around a lot. Uh, moved really across the country a lot. My mom just kind of was a, a gypsy that way. So we went uh, Florida, New York. You know, so. Uh, California uh, education um, I went I studied at a trade school in Oregon um, for the corrections officer program um, then uh, I attended uh, slick uh, for a little bit but then my wife uh, she was just on the edge of getting her bachelor's so we wanted to show support so I kind of took on some extra job stuff like that so that we can get her finished through school she just graduated uh, just a couple of months ago, and is uh, hopefully we'll be well starting. done. Well yeah, done. Yeah, it's awesome. And Wife so, is, right, what's your name again? Remind me. Brandy. Brandy's here. She's watching. Yeah, support. moral support. Moral so support. Awesome. So well done. Good job. And so she'll be starting hopefully uh, soon um, as a substitute. I think to start. And great. Great. So hopefully, awesome. you know. And then so she plans on getting her master's, and once she's done with that, then I plan on going back to uh, get a communications degree. Cool. Um, so, and yeah, so that's my background. I've got uh, a son who's visiting uh, with his mother out in Oregon uh, that he will be back uh, this Sunday. So I'm excited to get my, my he's 14. And, oh, yeah. He's at that, that great age where you just want to kind of bury him in the backyard. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> like, get that uh, that teenage kind of mm -hmm. eye roll. The eye rolls. Yeah. They've started. Oh, they started. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because, you know, he's been pestering me. So when you teach me how to drive, Dad, it's like, well, I'll teach you how to drive when you can look where you're sitting, you know, because <laughs> right now he just will, he sits on the dog. I can't even tell you how many times it just plops down. You hear oh, you know, the dog scoots away. Oh, get a little chihuahua. <laughs> but anyways, um, so that's a little bit about my background. Uh, as far as what's got me uh, motivated to jump into the political arena, um, essentially what it is, last election cycle, I was watching with my son and Essentially, he's just like, what's the point? You know, I mean, you, you vote the person that you vote for. They're not really going to do anything for you anyways. They're just going to fight. And I hate to say it, he's right, you know. Um, and so I did a lot of soul searching and thinking, you know, that's a little soul searching and, and talking with the family. And I decided, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. I um, had some friends of mine uh, that I had helped uh, – collect signatures to get Jill Stein on the on the ballot here in Utah mm -hmm. um, and so I decided that you know because uh, some of the Green Party platform especially the grassroots democracy and the fact that they don't take corporate funds um, really impressed me because you don't see the political party that won't take uh, campaign donations from corporations and so um, I figured this is perfect. You know, this this is a government for the people. It should be by, powered by the people, and the representation should be for the people. And so I've decided then to uh, run as a as a Green Party candidate. Um, and it's been just uh, an interesting experience all the way around. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, let's get into a little bit of the makeup of your district. So okay. you're running for Senate District 12. Which is like West Valley over to Tooele, right? And then it goes a little bit down into West Jordan. Is that correct? It's uh, like a sliver of West Valley, mm -hmm. uh, Magna Tooele, part of West Kearns, West Jordan, mm -hmm. kind of almost uh, the, the border is just almost like 5,600 West and, and West. You know? mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the natural boundary is uh, towards mm -hmm. the district. It does dip a little bit beyond, uh, a little east of 5600 West, but for the most part, that's kind of where that district is. Okay, cool. And so the incumbent is Daniel Thatcher, right? Yes. And he's running again, and he's a Republican. Third term. And then yeah. um, there's Claire Collard, who is running as a Democrat. Right. Um, and this is the second time she's run against him, or the third time? From I think this is her second time. Okay. 
uh, running. I believe she's also run uh, made an attempt at house uh, a time or two. Okay. Um, so. Okay, great. And then let's talk about the makeup of the district. So um, we've got the location, but let's talk about demographics, important issues. Um, like, what is this? What is this part of Utah thinking about? And what issues would you want to take to um, the Capitol on their behalf if you're elected? Well, uh, education is certainly, um, I think, an issue just really across the state. Um, I believe in uh, District 12, there's, uh, was that 25% or 34% in the district that have high school diplomas? Yeah, so 25 and older, only 34% have their high school diplomas, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously not a, a great mm -hmm. thing. Now, of course, you know, the, the big issue is money, um, finding funding and stuff like that. So my approach to this is um, you take a look at uh, Idaho, for example. Idaho is very much like Utah in a lot of ways. Um, one difference is that they have a state lottery. Um, I would like to see a state lottery brought to Utah so that uh, we can put that towards the children. The Idaho puts their uh, their money from the lotto to uh, support their education system. And, of course, we all know somebody who drives to Idaho or some other state um, to purchase lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. So why not keep that money in Utah? Why support another state's economy when we can put that money here in Utah and support our children and, and give the children and the teachers the support that they need. I mean, right now, as it stands, Utah spends about $6,000 a year per student, um, and we spend $22,000 a year per inmate. Now, the school-to-prison pipeline, you have a lot of disadvantaged children who get uh, neglected or you know, kind of put to the wayside. They drop out or they get suspended. They have uh, instances where then they are now you know, involved in crime. And so we can we can stop that. We can uh, fix that to where instead of having a, an ever growing prison population, we can also you know we we can have more children finishing school and and throwing less money at uh, at the prison system. It's uh, just something that I I, I think. Oh, sorry. I, it's no, when good. you have so much stuff running through your brain, yeah, it's all yeah, trying yeah. to come out at the same time. Um, no, I mean, because you have children who have, you know, problems at home. They they might not have a, a meal. Uh, they might, you know, might have issues at home. They come back. They're acting out because they don't know how to cope with what's going on at home. Um, the teachers who are overworked and, oh, you know, the, the classroom sizes are absolutely horrible. Um, they can't, as much as I would like to focus the attention on those children, they simply can't. And by having that uh, extra money coming in from something like a state lottery, um, we can certainly have um, better support, not only for our, our children and, and for our educators, but we're talking smaller classroom sizes because we can now build uh, better schools and, and update schools that are seriously out of date. Uh, and I, I think taking that approach uh, would certainly help our, our state uh, greatly. Another issue is uh, I would like to to see a, an environmental bill of rights uh, enacted into the state constitution that will help better protect um, our lands. That way we're not at the whims of a federal government of what they're going to do. Um, I would like to see um, an infrastructure put in place that supports uh, alternative uh, fuels vehicles, uh, so something like hydrogen or electric. Um, finding an, you know, a place to plug your car in is, is difficult. I mean, if you're outside of the Salt Lake area, yeah, it's almost impossible. And, and how are we going to improve our air quality if we can't give people a real option of the kind of vehicle they can drive? They can drive, you know, a, a gas guzzler, or they can drive a car that is more uh, economically, or, yeah, economically sound, more environmentally sound. Um, and doing tax breaks, instead of uh, a person paying for their tax uh, for their vehicles the same as, you know, we, we give those people who opt to buy um, like a, an electric car, hydrogen car, a, an opportunity to, you know, kind of pay less in, in taxes to help better support uh, the environment as well. Uh, other things that we can do is the recycling vending machines. Like in Oregon, for example, uh, you put in a can into the machine and you get five cents per can. 
Um, I know that uh, when I lived out there, you know, it's top ramen time, you know, so <laughs> you, you collect the cans, you, you throw the cans in the machine, and after, you know, you get maybe 10, 20 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, you take it into the grocery store, you either buy groceries or get the cash, you know, and I think that's a great way to kind of motivate people to just, if they see trash on the side of the road, hey, they, that's five cents right there they can uh, use to... another issue right right um so i want to get i'm very interested in the environmental bill of rights mm -hmm. but i want to come back to that let's talk about your decision to run as in the green party um that's kind of fraught with a lot of conversation right i'm sure when you say green party people say oh you know and then there's certain talking points that are always addressed um so i'm curious about the history of the green party Give us kind of like a Green Party 101 for people who aren't super familiar with it, with their platform. I mean, you mentioned no PAC money, right. um, but um, I'm curious beyond that even, or maybe expand on that, what need is the Green Party filling? Um, I think that the need that the Green Party is filling is uh, just an alternative to what we currently have. Uh, again, you take uh, the Democrats or the Republicans, you know, they... They have their their money, their their pockets filled with corporate uh, donations, and so when that happens, you're not getting, uh, you know, kind of a true uh, Daniel Thatcher, for example. Um, over the last couple of years, he's received over three thousand dollars from Energy Solutions. Uh, recently, Energy Solutions received a one point seven million dollar tax break. Mm -hmm. He's also uh, uh, putting forth legislation to have a uh, part of Tuila. Uh, as a dumping as a landfill for energy solutions so now that if that's what the people in Tuella want if they want a landfill it's a, it's a secluded area so I can understand it's kind of out of the way but still there didn't seem to be a lot of input for Tuella uh, the uh, what conversation was had that involved the constituents of Tuella saying hey this is what I want to do what do you guys think mm -hmm. You know, and if they don't care and, you know, it's out in the middle of nowhere and they, they're happy with that, then fine. Then that's the will of the people. People say that's fine. But when you just collect $3,000, you know, over $3,000 and then you're doing this, it's viewed as kind of shady. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's certainly how uh, I would see that, you know, looking at that. And then, you know, they get a million dollars, a $1.7 million tax break. They are now getting a you know, legislation put forth to have a, a landfill put in, you know, it looks like $3,000 well spent. Um, Claire Collard, uh, she works for a credit union and she collects a lot of her donations from credit unions. So again, you know, campaign money should not be mired in such a way that kind of questions your integrity. Mm -hmm. As a Green Party candidate, uh, again, I, I don't have that. I, I kind of have a the high ground on this one i could say look no you guys you know, I, I've, I've asked hey you know don't take corporate money let's run this campaign on on the people's let's just take campaign money mm -hmm. of course uh, neither were enthusiastic about the, the prospect i've you know i've told them i'm hoping for a debate if you guys are but again you know my phone isn't ringing off the hook mm -hmm. um so uh, some of the other things that the Green Party uh, stands for, of course, is uh, economic and uh, environmental sustainability. I know that a friend of mine, Kimberly, is uh, really passionate about uh, kind of finding alternative to, to plastic straws, of course, because of what uh, plastic straws does to the environment. There are options. I mean, and, and there are a lot of options that we can do. It's just that... Yeah, there's going to be uh, one of the things that I would like to see is I would like to see all state buildings uh, with with solar panels, you know, run off of solar energy. Mm. Now, yes, that'll be kind of an expensive thing to do off the bat. But in the long run, if you're thinking 20, 30 years from now, the money that we save would be tremendous. I mean, we could take that money and put that towards a, a heating program for the heat during the winter, you know, for the elderly and, and for those who, who can't afford uh, to stay warm, you know, so those are ways that we can kind of put that and I, I know I'm digressing, so I get started no, no, and no, I just fine. keep going. Um, but at least for me, the Green Party of Utah, because um, I, I don't, my focus has been on a state level um, because national level is just kind of right now just this extra stuff that I don't need on my plate because um, there's a lot to fix at home. Um, the, the 
two years ago, we had collected signatures, 2,000 signatures, to be a recognized state uh, party. And we have a great group of people that have worked hard. Um, we didn't pay for volunteers. We didn't, you know, we, we did this on our own. I've collected signatures. Um, so there was no, it was just blood, sweat, and tears and, and a passion to uh, do better for this state, you know, mm -hmm. and to expect better for this state. And so we, we got that. Uh, we are running uh, several candidates. Uh, we have, uh, I know Adam is, uh, Adam Davis is running for uh, Congressional District uh, one? 1, I believe, Thanks. yeah. Um, and uh, Brendan uh, Phillips, he's running for Tooele Commissioner. Okay. Uh, Tooele County Commissioner, so he's doing that. Of course, uh, I'm going in District 12. And we are hoping to educate people more on what the Green Party is about. It's not this big, you know, because oh, the conspiracy theories that I have heard uh, when I've introduced myself as a... Mm -hmm. As a Green Party candidate, it's just, you know, Russians this or, or whatever that, you know, and it's just like, okay, well, I don't know much about the national stuff, but here's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. and, and this is how I think I can help, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I really try to kind of encourage people to think beyond just party. It, 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 people have kind of put themselves in that position to where they will vote party regardless of who the candidate is, and that's bad because you could have a, a really terrible candidate and you're going to vote for him because he has that uh, D or R uh, next to their name. Uh, the yellow dog voters, is, mm -hmm. I think, is what uh, they're referred to as. They'll vote for a yellow dog if they have a, a Democrat or Republican uh, logo next to their mm -hmm. name. Um, but uh, there is a lot more about the, you know, I, I can't quite answer all of that because that's just a great ton of information mm -hmm. that I will overload myself. But if anyone is curious, they can go to greenpartyofutah.com or then go to greenpartyus.org, uh, uh, I believe, mm -hmm. and they can find information if they're curious about uh, doing research on what the Green Party is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay. How big is the Green Party in Utah? So you've got three, it sounds like, candidates in the Salt Lake County area at least. Um, but how big is your membership? Uh, membership is just under a thousand at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we're of course still working on uh, growing the party here in Utah. We had uh, just last month the uh, annual national meeting, uh, so we've had the uh, entire you know national Green Party out uh, for a convention here, um, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of great people, a lot of uh, uh, great candidates across the country. So. Uh, you know, we're we're hopeful that uh, we could start seeing more growth, uh, really, just across the board. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're working on ways to kind of uh, not only educate people on what the Green Party is about, but to uh, to get people more involved in their communities. Mm -hmm. So, how do you respond when I'm sure you hear the question, "The Green Party is taking votes from the Democratic Party," or just like the Libertarian Party has to respond? libertarians are taking part votes from the Republican Party how do you respond to that oh, that's my favorite yeah I get that a lot um, and my reply is instead of worrying about the uh, the votes that a third party candidate has earned what is your party doing to reach those who don't even bother to vote because there's 48 percent of the population that didn't vote in the last election cycle what's being done uh, to reach them what what kind of outreach program do they have in place to to talk to people? A lot of people don't vote because of the fact that they don't feel they're listened to. You know, they just uh, when when people ask that question, they're just assuming those votes are supposed to be uh, for their candidate, and that's wrong. No vote is given; it's earned. And if uh, you can't earn the the support or the votes, then you didn't deserve those votes to begin with. Mm. And so. That's the question that I pose back to them. You know, what is your party doing to earn the votes instead of, of expecting those votes to be yours? Mm -hmm. to begin with? So, is the does the fault lie with the parties, or does the fault lie with um, the candidates, or is there kind of a combination of both? I think it's a it's not only a combination of, of the party, the candidates, but it's also the government as well. It's not like the government's really going out of its way to be that inclusive you know when you have bills that are being passed kind of uh, under the table kind of thing or just kind of in the hopes that no one's paying attention you know then they get stuff 
passed that really shouldn't be passed. Uh, for example, you know, those signs on the bars and restaurants saying this is a bar, not a restaurant. That's that's not right. That's just it. it if we want the Olympics, you know, they're going to look at that and laugh. You know, we're not even uh, if we don't want the Olympics back. Even if, yeah, even laugh. if we don't. But still, I mean, you have basketball teams, you know, like uh, the Clippers, like, you know, when when the Jazz were in the playoffs, they didn't want to come to the come to Utah. Now, how sad is that? Mm -hmm. What does that say about like, this is a great state? Mm -hmm. You know, this is a great place to visit, but nobody wants to visit because, you know, uh, of stuff like this. And so what if elected uh, to, to, to be inclusive is I would hold a, a monthly town hall meeting. Oh, and, those are in the rare order these days. That's very exciting. <laughs> well, it's necessary. I mean, if you, that's the magic word, you hold a town hall in there. <laughs> I'm not in your district, though, so. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Because, you know, again, the laws affect us all the same, mm -hmm. and, and to get people's input is, is always important. And, and that's kind of the thing. See, my view on an elected official is not to just simply represent the people. My, my purpose as a representative is to amplify the voice of the people mm -hmm. so that when I go up uh, on the Capitol, I say, look, this is what my people are saying. This is what they're upset about. Mm -hmm. We need to do something about this. You know, and if I have to bring people to talk to them, you know, I'm more than happy to, to, to bring everybody up there so that they can have their say because it's their government. They mm -hmm. should have a say, you know, and there might be situations where, you know, we might disagree or what have you. Uh, and that's kind of the problem with, with the political system as it is with Democrats and Republicans. They say they want to be bipartisan, but when they get to it, when it actually comes down to it, it's party lines. The only time anything you take nationally, for example, it's because the Republicans are in control, that stuff are getting passed. If it's the other way around, the only thing that's going to get passed is if the Democrats, you know, no one has, there's a quote, um, I don't know who, who says it, but it, it's a, a quote that I absolutely adore. It's, uh, we have gotten to the point to where we now listen to respond rather than listen to understand. Mm. And while somebody who you disagree with is already, you know, spouting all their stuff, and you're, instead of trying to understand where they're coming from, you're already thinking of a rebuttal. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's more argument. You know, I... I if I do a town hall meeting and I have people that disagree with me, I'm glad they disagree with me. That's the cornerstone of this democracy is, is dissension. I want to know why they disagree with me. Why do they think I'm wrong? Let's find, you know, because it could be something that's not even entering my mind. It could be something that is uh, just not even on the radar screen. And I want to better understand what their issue is, why they're, they're having that. And so we have a discussion. And we might find common ground, and then we can build from that common ground, and we can build a working relationship between the people and the government. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we just simply don't have that. It's the government's going to do. Uh, you take uh, Proposition 2. You know, there was a lot of uh, talk about the medical cannabis and whether or not they were going to pass their own law to kind of super, you know, super, sur bleh, I can't, uh, circumvent uh, that, and, and that's ridiculous. It is the will of the people. Uh, Daniel Thatcher, he says he supports the bill, but for one item is that you can't arrest somebody for DUI. If, and, and I can understand his concern, but why not do this? Why not just reintroduce the bill and leave that part out of it if that is something you truly stand for, truly support? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you look at you know the Colorado, you look at Nevada, their DUI you know, wasn't really like maybe a percent raised here or there, you know, it wasn't. A, and then on top of that, we're talking about medical cannabis, not recreational use. Mm -hmm. So really how big of an impact is a, is a DUI going to be on, on people who, you know, probably are not even, you know, are so ill that can't even drive anyways, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but again, there are things that could be implemented. You know, he could have easily have just reintroduced the bill minus the DUI thing, which I think uh, a lot of people would have found as a, as a fair compromise. Um, but again, it's, it's instead of talking to the people, instead of getting their input, instead of why is that in there, you know, instead of kind of figuring out what it is they put in there, why they did, they're, they're talking about ways of circumventing it, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do more to get people involved so that they just can't have a blank check to just do as they please. Uh, and my hopes is that if I 
am fortunate enough to earn the votes of, uh, of the people of District 12. The message that sends that a third party candidate can unseat a, a Republican incumbent in Utah would, I think, send just waves in this state. And I think other legislatures, other lawmakers will take notice. If this person who's just out of nowhere comes in, unseats this guy, then there's a good chance that uh, that I could lose my job. So I think I need to start doing my job mm -hmm. and, and actually talking to the people, holding town hall meetings and getting people involved. And, and I think that's where you're going to see you know, more voter turnout is when you include people in the government. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a kind of like a quick rundown of what your platform is? So you talked about education, you talked about the Environmental Bill of Rights. Um, I assume that's, you, you just said like clean energy, clean air, stuff like that. Um, and then anything else on that platform that you wanna let people know, voters in the 12th district? Um, that's uh, just more involvement. You know, uh, you take, uh, just the government needs to listen. Mm -hmm. um, with the Environmental Bill of Rights, uh, of course there's more to that. Um, I would like to see that put in place to where if they want to mine in this state, it has to be voted on uh, by a majority of the people. Hmm. So instead of uh, our, our elected leader saying, yeah, you can do that or no, you can't, it's the people's lands. It, it's, it's actually, it's indigenous lands uh, to mm -hmm. begin with. So really, you know, and, and that's another thing too. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it confuses me that as a nation, we recognize indigenous lands as independent nations uh, within the US boundaries. And we recognize them as actual nations. Yet Utah prohibits uh, Indian reservations from doing things like mm -hmm. if that that's uh, about to, to bully, uh, you know, you can't just tell another nation what they can and cannot do with their own lands. It is, it's an absurdity. Um, of these uh of these indian nations not not just token spots in government but actual ambassadors with you know all the rights and privileges of an ambassador mm -hmm. um it's just not fair and so going though back uh, for the lands that are under state control if we want another mining uh, facility to tear up the place, we should at least put it to the people to decide if that's exactly what they want. Hmm. If they don't want uh, a mining uh, put uh, out uh, for Bears Ear or anything like that, then it's not going to be put out there. You know, it should not be up to our legislators to decide. It should be up to the people to decide. Hmm. And so that uh, is also kind of part of the uh, Environmental Bill of Rights, a ban on fracking. Um, restoring lands that are already been damaged. Um, you take Kennecott, for example, if they leave tomorrow, we're the ones that are stuck cleaning the bill. We're the, we're the ones stuck cleaning up their mess. And not only is that going to hurt us economically, um, it's gonna hurt a lot of families because what are the miners going to do then at that point uh, when they finally decide to, to close up? You know, We've got so many people then out of work and that will really be devastating to the state. So we need to put actions into place now that hold them accountable, uh, not only for the, the, the cleanup of, of the mess that they make, but at least trying to help uh, miners transition to, to other jobs, um, you know, like uh, solar panels, for example, or solar farms, or, or other kind of uh, re sustainable energy source that, uh, that we can convert uh, these workers to, um, because, you know, a lot of these people have been miners their whole lives, and so if that closes down, you know, what are they going to do? You know, so we need to, and our Kennecott needs to help uh, make that preparation so that um, the citizens of Utah are not, you know, left in, in the lurch on this one. Hmm. Okay, so a couple more questions. Um, what does a dream Utah look like for you? So 20, 50, 100 years down the road, like if you're perfect Utah, mm -hmm. I mean, Utah is great, but I mean, like in terms of government oh, yeah. and civic engagement, stuff like that. Um, 
what would that look like to you? It would look like, uh, for one, uh, an elimination, a complete elimination of uh, child hunger. Um, I, I, we have the capabilities to do that. We have the means to do that. We just need to do it um, simply by, you know, having it to where instead of groceries, throw away uh, food before it expires they can simply donate it to a food bank uh, it, we can eliminate that uh, I'd like to see a, a huge reduction in the uh, poisons that are in our air I, I think again that's something that's not unachievable we just have to change our habits and in a in 40 50 years so we can certainly uh, accomplish that uh, I would like to see I, I would like to be able to look at a ballot and see a ton of names on there. I, I, I want people to feel like, you know what, I, I know I can do good. I, I want people to, to just get in there and say, I want to run, I want to make changes, and I want to see like four or five names on a ballot so that uh, anyone who thinks that they can do it, do it. Go mm -hmm. out there, make your case, earn the, the votes, and, and do something positive. You know, nobody, I don't think anyone who runs for office ever... Um, has the intent to do bad. I just think that uh, from when they first start to to later, they kind of lose their way, and, and that's why, again, you know, two term limits is is more than enough. It's what if elected, that's all I'll seek is is two terms. Um, I, I think that if you have a career politician who's in there for you know like decades, Orrin Hatch, for example. I think is a perfect example of that. I think things get a little stagnant. Mm -hmm. You know, the ideas are stagnant. They kind of set in their ways. They kind of set in their opinions. And that's not good for anybody. But if we have an influx, of, you know, let's say eight years later, we've got someone new and he's got ideas. He's got uh, things that are outside the box. Perfect. Let's let's see what you got. Let's see what we can work with. Hmm. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I would like to see a lot more social justice uh, for our minority groups and for the uh, uh, overlooked and marginalized uh, groups, the LGBTQ plus communities, the, the, the black organizations, the Latinx, um, this bullyism kind of thing, especially in the Latino community where you have people can well, where's your papers, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, that's insane, you know, I mean, if a person's only crime is that they want to provide a better life for their family, then I say modern day Vikings. Right, that what right. You're describing. <laughs> you know, we're all, it's, but you know, yeah, we we don't have room for for individuals like that. Um, but if, if a person just wants a better life, you know, I mean, my my family's uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, and so I've seen a lot of, uh, discrimination against my grandmother, stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, they treat her like she's second class citizen and that's, you know, all right. You know, mm -hmm. she, she's first of all, an American citizen. People tend to, to over and even our, our own federal government seems to overlook the fact that uh, Puerto Rico even exists. Um, but we need to treat people like people. Mm -hmm. we, we need to stop. You know, with these these stupid phone calls to the police that you see on Facebook all the time and stuff like that, we we need to kind of just put uh, people back on on equal footing. And I think you know, as far as like civil rights, I think that's going to be won and lost in in the classroom. That's going to be with our children. Uh, this uh, march uh, that the the kids did a couple months ago and uh, since. Um, a lot of them call them sheep and, and, and what have you. And I find that so, so upsetting because they're, 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 they're getting involved, you know, and that, and they might not agree with it and that's fine. People may not agree with the gun control or anything like that, but these, these kids aren't sheep. They are bravely making a stand and it's time that we, we listen again as, as a community to what they have to say, because these are our future. These are our future leaders. These are our future congressmen. These are our future senators, our future lawyers, judges. Listen to what they have to say. You don't have to agree with it, but let's start a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, and so 
Yeah. Sorry, kind of went more off listening. on a little tangent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're listening. And then that's what we need to do more as, as a government. Great. All right. So how do people get in contact with you if they want to support your campaign or um, want more information? Well, um, you can find me at uh, on Facebook. It's uh, Abrian, the number four, uh, and then Senate. And for my website, it's abrianvillardi.nationbuilding.com. Great. All right. And of course, audience, be sure to follow us. You're already on Facebook, but follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Better Utah. And we will see you next week at 1230. Thanks.